اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمدللہ رب العالمین الرحمن الرحیم مالک یوم الدین ایاک نعبد و ایاک نستعین اہدنا سراط المستقیم سراط اللذین انمت علیہم غیر المخدوب علیہم والضالین آمین بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمدللہ رب العالمین والعاقبت للمتقین الصلاة والسلام وعلى رسوله سیدنا محمد و علی و صحابی اجمعین All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Lord and sustainer of the worlds. Abundance of salutations be upon the last and final messenger, Sayyidina Mawlana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Salutations be upon his noble purified household, his companions, and upon the beloved friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Salutations be upon my master, Zad Khaja Makhdoom, Alauddin Ali Hamad Sabir Kalyari, Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali, and upon my spiritual mentors, Hazrat Khaja Sayyid Muhammad Shah Chisti Sabri, Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali, and Hazrat Ghulam Jilani Chisti Sabri, Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to this program, Bustani Awliya in which we feature on the lives and anecdotes of the beloved friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah, this is a special broadcast on the life and teachings of Khaja Khajigan, Khaja Gharib Nawaz rahmatullahi ta'ala ali. Alhamdulillah, in our past episode, we were discussing uh, the Surah Fatiha as being taught by Khaja Khajigan, Khaja Gharib Nawaz, Mu'inuddin Chishti Ajmeri rahmatullahi ta'ala ali. And inshallah, today we'll continue with that subject on how Khaja Gharib Nawaz Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali has given an interpretation to the various verses of the Noble Surah Al-Fatiha and inshallah today uh, we will discuss how he breaks up this entire Surah including the each alphabet uh, how Gharib Nawaz Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali uh, breaks it up and this is all recorded by Khaja Qutbuddin Bakhtiar Kaki Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali in the kitab called Dalilul Arifin so Khaja Khajigan Khaja Gharib Nawaz Rahmatullahi Ali says that the Surah Fatiha is a Surah that is a Surah that has seven verses and Imam Nasir Basti has stated that there is such because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created man in seven parts says whoever recites these seven verses will attain freedom from the torment of hell he says that the earlier Mashaikh have written that there are 124 letters in the Surah and there have been 124,000 prophets who have been sent to earth. He says, thus in exchange for every letter recited, a person attains the reward of a thousand prophets. So this is some of the virtues of Surah Fatiha. So Khaja Gharib Nawaz Ali goes on further stating, he says that, how is this possible that a person can get the reward of a thousand prophets? So Khaja Gharib Nawaz explained how this is possible by saying that if you look at the word Alhamdu, he says this word contains five letters. He says Allah has made five daily prayers compulsory and will, co and will forgive any mistake made in the prayers if these five letters are recited. He says the next word is Lillah. He says and this word contains three letters he says if this is added to the above five it equal it equals eight he says one who decides this will have eight doors of paradise open for him so that he may enter from whichever door he desires then he further says he says when you look at the word rabbil alameen he says this word contains 18 uh, sorry this word contains 10 10 letters he says thus adding to the above it makes it now a total of 18 letters he says Allah has created 18,000 worlds and whoever recites these 18 letters will attain the reward equivalent to these 18,000 worlds he says the next word is ar-rahman he says and this word contains six letters he says adding this to the 18 now makes it 24 letters he says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made day and night 24 hours long he says whoever recites these 24 letters will become so purified of sin as if he was just born he says then when you look at the word ar-rahim he says it contains six letters as well and if added makes the total of 30 letters thus far he says Allah has created the bridge of Pool Sirat to be a journey of 30,000 years. He says recitation of these 
30 letters will enable one to cross the distance at lightning speed if one recites these words. He says then Maliki Yomid Deen, it contains 12 letters and Allah has created 12 months in a year. He says for the recitation of these 12 letters, Allah will forgive any sins committed in those 12 months. He says the total number thus far is 42. He says the next word is Iya Kana Abudu. He says and this word contains 8 letters. He says if these 8 are added to the previous 42, it equals to 50. He says Allah has decreed that the day of judge, judgment be equal to 50,000 years. He says whoever recites these 50 letters, Allah will afford him the opportunity to be in the company of the truthful servants on the day of Qiyamah. He says the, 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 the words wa iya kana, wa iya He says contains 11 letters. He says bringing the total now to 61. He says on the earth and in the skies Allah has created 61 oceans. He says for reciting 61 le for for reciting the 61 letters Allah will record good deeds equal to every drop of water con uh, contained in those oceans and remove bad deeds from a person's record equal to that amount. He says the next verse, Ihdina Sirat al Mustaqim. He says contains 19 letters. He's thus, he says thus adding up now to 80. He says it is Allah, it is Allah's law that whoever consumes alcohol on earth must be punished with 80 lashes. So whoever recites these 80 letters will be protected from consuming alcohol and thus being safe from receiving this 80 lashes of punishment. He says the rest of the surah, Sirat al lazina and Amta alayhim, Ghayr al Maghdubi alayhim wal al contains 44 letters. He says if we add these letters up, he says the total number of these letters of the surah will equal to 124. He says Allah has created 124,000 prophets and thus whoever recites these 124 letters will attain the reward of 124,000 prophets. Thus as stated before, for each letter recited, one will attain the reward of a thousand prophets. So Alhamdulillah, this is the interpretation that Khaja Khajagan Khaja Gharib Nawaz Mawinuddin Chishti Ajmeri Rahmatullahi Ta'ala gives with regards to the importance of Surah Fatiha. Then Khaja Qutbuddin Bakhti Rekaki Rahmatullahi Ta'ala reports an incident further. And he says that Khaja Gharib Nawaz Rahmatullahi Ta'ala said that once while I was traveling with my guide, with my Sheikh, Khaja Usma Haruni Rahmatullahi Ta'ala he said we reached the banks of a river. He says we were in a hurry to get across but could not find a boat. He says, close your eyes, the great Khaja com commanded me. So Khaja Gharib now said that Khaja, when they came to the bank of this river and they couldn't find a boat to go across, so Khaja Usma Haruni told Gharib now close your eyes. So Gharib now said, I did so. He says, and upon opening my eyes, I found myself and my master on the other side of the river. So he says, how did we get here? I asked my Sheikh. So Khaja Usman Haruni Rahmatullahi Ta'ala said, he says, I recited Surah Fatiha five times and placed my foot on the water and the water spread open and we crossed over it. So Khaja Gharib Nawaz Rahmatullahi Ta'ala in, in conclusion, he said that whoever recites Surah Fatiha sincerely for any need and if that need is not fulfilled, he should grab hold of my hem of my robe on the day of Qiyamah. So imagine this is a guarantee that Khaja Gharib Nawaz Rahmatullah is giving that whoever recites Surah Fatiha sincerely and if his dua is not accepted then he basically what Gharib Nawaz Rahmatullah is saying by telling one that you must hold the hem of his garment on the day of Qiyamah means that you must hold Gharib Nawaz Rahmatullah responsible in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if your need was not fulfilled by the by the recitation of Surah Fatiha. So Alhamdulillah here we see in the teachings of Khaja Gharib Nawaz Rahmatullah he teaches us to follow 
the practices of reciting the Quran to be able to receive the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then we find that in some of the uh, uh, um, teachings of Khaja Gharib Nawaz rahmatullahi ta'ala and also with regards to gaining the benefit of closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, gaining the benefit of uh, becoming a beloved of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Khaja Gharib Nawaz rahmatullahi ta'ala here again gives simple advices that we can follow by which we can uh, 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 receive much benefit. So Khaja Gharib Nawaz Rahmatullahi Ta'ala he records and he says that by merely looking at five things, by merely looking at five things, one is in these five things are included in the acts of ibadah. So he says that from amongst these five things, Khaja Gharib Nawazamatullahi Ta'ala Ali said, he says the first thing to look at is to look at the face of your parents with love. So he narrated a hadith in which he said that the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that whichever child look at, looks at the face of his parents for the pleasure of Allah, reward equivalent to one major hajj will be recorded in his book of deeds. So Khaja Gharib Nawazamatullahi Ta'ala Ali then narrated this incident and he said that there was a young man who was a sinner who had passed away and in a dream he, had, uh, he was seen that this young man was entering paradise among those people who had performed Hajj. So he says the people were astonished and they inquired from this young man who they knew was a sinner and they said to him that how is it? that you have attained such an honor that you, are in, you, that you are entering paradise with those people who are performing Hajj. So this boy replied and he said, he said, I had an old mother and every day before departing from home, I would place my head at her feet. My mother would then supplicate to Allah on my behalf, asking him to forgive me and grant me the reward of pilgrimage. He says, Allah accepted my mother's dua and for this reason I am amongst those people who are performing Hajj and roaming in paradise with those people who are performing Hajj. So thereafter, Khaja Gharib Nawaz Rahmatullahi Ta'ala then narrated an incident of Hazrat Khaja Bayazid Bustami Rahmatullahi Ta'ala and he said that Khaja Bayazid Bustami was asked as to how he had attained such a high position. So Hazrat Bayazid Bustami Rahmatullahi Ta'ala said that I was seven years old and he, and he replied, he says that I was in the masjid and I was reciting the Quran Sharif and when I came to the verses Bil Wali Daina Ahsana So he said that I asked my teacher, what is the meaning of this? So he said that it is the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that just as you serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you must serve your parents. He says, hearing this, Hazrat Bayezid Bustami left everything and he went home. He said, I placed my head at my, mas at my mother's feet and said to her, that, oh my beloved mother, I heard that Allah had commanded such. Now you supplicate in his court on my behalf and following his command, I will be in service to you. So he says, out of compassion towards me, she performed two rakats of namaz. Thereafter, she took my hand and then turned towards the Qibla and handed me over to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he says, this position that I now have is due to my mother's dua. He says, there is an, another narration, he says, Hazrat Bayezid Bustami rahmatullah alayhi. He says that once during winter, my mother asked me for some water. He says, I immediately went out and filled a leather bag with water. He says, upon returning, I found that my mother was asleep. So she awoke, she awoke towards the last portion of the night and found me standing with the cold leather bag of water. So he says, due to the intense cold, the bag, the leather bag stuck to my hands. So, so, uh, so that when my mother took the bag from me, the skin from the palms of my hand peeled off. He says, looking at this immediately, my mother embraced me, kissed me and made dua. He said that, oh beloved of a mother, you have undergone such great difficulty for the pleasure of your mother. May Allah reward you. He says, my mother's supplication was accepted and all the blessings that is now found upon me is due to my mother's dua. Now here we find that Khaja Gharib Nawaz Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali that we Alhamdulillah that we who are followers of Khaja Gharib Nawaz Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali it is important that we also take this nasihat and these lessons as taught by Khaja Gharib Nawaz Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali Then Khaja Gharib Nawaz Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali said that the other thing 
that by merely looking at it one gets the reward of ibadah he says that it is to look at the holy quran just by merely looking at the holy quran so khaja gharib nawaz he says that for the one who looks at the quran or recites it allah grants him two rewards he says one for reciting the quran and one for looking at the Quran. He says for every letter recited, the master then said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants a person 10 good deeds and rewards and, and removes 10 bad deeds from such a person. So then he says that on one occasion, that after the, the, the demise of Sultan Mahmud Ghaznavi, he was seen in a dream and the person asked Sultan Mahmud Ghaznavi that how has Allah treated you? So he said that he has that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has treated me with kindness due to the fact that one night I was a guest in a person's home. He says that in that room where I was given, he says there was a copy of the Holy Quran on the shelf. He says, out of respect, I thought to myself that how shall I sleep here in which lies the Holy Quran? He says, I resolved that I should rather move the Quran to some other place. And that thought passed my mind that he should rather move the Quran to another place. So he says, for after thinking for a little while, he says that why should, for my comfort, I should remove the Quran from the room. So he says that I rather decided that it is better that I move to some other place, but do not remove the Quran from that room. He says, for the mere fact of my respect for this holy Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forgiven me. So he says like that, there are other things. Like for example, to look at the face of the religious scholars of Islam, for the pious scholars of Islam, just to merely look at their face, one gets the reward of ibadah. He says, and the next thing, the fourth thing to look at, he says, is merely looking at the Holy Kaaba. One gets the reward of ibadah by merely looking at the Holy Kaaba. And he says, the next, the last thing is, that is to look at the face of one spiritual guide. One gets the reward of merely looking at the face of your spiritual guide, one gets the reward of ibadah. But when you look at this way that Khaja Gharib Nawaz Rahmatullahi has set out this particular discourse, he said that the first thing that if you look at, you get the sawab of ibadah. The first thing is when you look at the face of your parents. The second thing, the Quran. The third thing, the religious pious scholars of Islam. The, 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 the fourth thing was to look at the Holy Kaaba and the fifth thing is to look at the face of your spiritual guide. So we should take this nasiha that before showing respect to any other thing that we should first start off with respect and other in our homes whereby we should first love and honor and respect our parents and in that regards the next thing the Quran, then the scholars, then the, 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 the Holy Kaaba and lastly your spiritual guide. And unfortunately in our times we find that people show immense love to the spiritual guides but at home we find that there is disrespect, total disrespect to one's parents and this goes against the teachings of Khaja Khajgan, Khaja Gharib Nawaz Moinuddin Chishti Ajmeri Rahmatullahi Ta'ala So Alhamdulillah Khaja Khajgan, Khaja Gharib Nawaz Rahmatullahi Ta'ala lived this great life of piety spreading the words of peace and love and it is says that Khaja Gharib Nawaz Rahmatullahi spent his final days in Ajmer Sharif and grossed in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and up to his last days he served humanity and it is said that there is no person who left the door of Khaja Gharib Nawaz Rahmatullahi Ta'ala empty handed and it is recorded that the people of Ajmer Sharif lived from the food of the kitchen of Khaja Gharib Nawaz Rahmatullahi Ta'ala and Alhamdulillah this is a tradition of the langar or the, the food that comes from the darbar of Khaja Gharib Nawaz Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali that till this day, Alhamdulillah, this langar is being fed on a daily basis for over 800 years. So Khaja Gharib Nawaz Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali was also a personality who was very fond of listening to Mahfil al -Sama. and in his Mahfil al -Sama, there were many, many scholars and ulama who used to attend the Mahfil al -Sama. and it was found that when people used to leave the Mahfil al-Sama of Khaja Gharib Nawaz Rahmatullahi Ta'ala they would find themselves more in love with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and more in love with following the spiritual path. So it is said that 40 days 
prior to the demise of Khaja Gharib Nawaz Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali, Khaja Gharib Nawaz Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali delivered a final message to the people who were, who were assembled around him. And this message of Khaja Gharib Nawaz Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali is uh, an eternal message and a universal message for all. So Khaja Gharib Nawaz Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali said, and he addressed the people saying, that love towards all and malice towards none. He said, mere talk of peace will avail you not, right? He says, mere talk of Allah and religion will not take you far. He says, bring out the latent powers of your being and re reveal the full magnificence of your imp immortal self. He says, be surcharged with peace and joy and scatter them wherever you are and wherever you go. He says, and be a blazing fire of truth be a blossom of love and be a soothing balm of peace. He says, with your spiritual light, dispel the darkness of ignorance, dissolve the clouds of discord and war, and spread goodwill, peace and harmony amongst the people. He said, that never seek any help, charity or favours from anyone except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he advised with tears in his eyes, and he says, never go to the courts of kings and rulers, but never refuse to bless and help the poor and needy, the widows and the orphans if they come to your door. He says, this is your mission of peace to serve the people. And then he concluded, he says, carry out dutifully and courageously this mission so that I as your spiritual master may not be ashamed of any shortcomings on your part before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and all the mashayikh and my holy spiritual predecessors on the day of Qayama. So this was the last sermon that Khaja Gharib Nawaz Rahmatullahi Ta'ala delivered. So it says that 20 days after this sermon, that on the 14th of Jamaad al-Akhir, 627 Hijri, he called his most beloved disciple Khaja Khajigan Khaja Qutbuddin Bakhtiyar Kaki Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali and unwrapped all the sacred relics at which he had received from his master, which was received from his master and which was received from a chain reaching right up to the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So these relics Khaja Gharib Nawaz Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali handed over to Khaja Qutbuddin Bakhtiyar Kaki and made him his chief successor. And when he handed it over to Khaja Qutbuddin Bakhtiyar Kaki Rahmatullahi Ali, he told him, he says that I entrust this responsibility upon you as it befits you. He says, look after them as I have done so, so that I may not be ashamed before the great Khaja Gan on the day of Qayama. So it is said that after this Khaja Gharib Nawaz Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali used to his, retire privately in his Hujra and it is said that on the Monday, 6th of Rajab, 627 Hijri, Khaja Gharib Nawaz Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali closed the door behind him not permitting anybody to enter. And the entire night Khaja Gharib Nawaz Rahmatullahi Ali remained in Ibadah and the people who were on the outside could hear mystical sounds that were coming out from the room. And at the time of Salatul Fajr, when they went to the room to awake Khaja Gharib Nawaz Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali for Salatul Fajr, they found that the door was locked from the inside. And when they forcefully opened the door, they found Khaja Gharib Nawaz Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali's blessed body lying on the ground. And Khaja Gharib Nawaz Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali had passed away from this physical world and upon his forehead were written the words Haza Habibullah Mata Fi Hubbillah that indeed he was a person who lived in the love of Allah he was a beloved of Allah and he died in the love of Allah. So it is said that on the same night a personality had a dream and they saw that the Holy Prophet wasallam was going somewhere. So when it was asked by the Holy Prophet wasallam that Ya Rasulullah where are you going? So Khaja Gharib, so, so the Holy Prophet wasallam said that Mu'inuddin is our beloved and I am on my way to, wel to welcome Khaja Mu'inuddin Chishti Ajmeri Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali. Khaja Gharib Nawaz Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali's janaza namaz was performed by his son Khaja Fakhruddin Abdul Khair Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali. And Khaja Gharib Nawaz Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali was buried in the very same room where he is to make ibadah and where today his mazar is built. So we make dua to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala increases in our hearts love for the beloved friends of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and grant us the ability to follow in their footsteps. 
tribes wa sallallahu ta'ala ala khairi khalqihi wa nuri ashihi sayyidina wa maulana muhammadiyu wa alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh